When I first heard about Andrew, all I knew was that he was from Michigan, kind of near Detroit. Having zero knowledge of anything outside of the Northeast, our closest frame of reference was, of course, the gangster rapper Eminem. He was thus known as Eight Mile Andrew for a while there. Imagine my surprise when I end up meeting this guy who's head of his class in CSOM, and for reasons beyond my understanding, can't clap to the beat of a song. Not the makings of a musical artist, but he did an excellent job of sweeping Liz off of her feet six and a half years ago. We are so I feel like Andrew understands what's going on. He can take a look at our family and figure out what he needs to do to fit in, and he just does it seamlessly. I'm so glad that she found a guy like Andrew, and I just feel really lucky to have him be a part of our family and feel really lucky to be a part of their wedding day. We first met at a power hour in my dorm sophomore year, and then we kicked off our dating at a beer pong tournament junior year, so. <laughs> I can clearly recall attending a party at the White House, which is Liz's beloved off-campus housing at BC. Yes. And Liz grabbing me by the arm and pointing at a guy across the room playing Beirut and saying, I have a crush on that boy. I thought to myself that this had to be one heck of a guy to catch Liz Kelly's eye. And it turns out he is. That's awesome. Do you like my dress? I like it. <laughs> you ready to do this? I'm ready. Good. When they had that ever so important talk about making their relationship official, Andrew sweetly told Liz that he thought he probably liked her enough to not be seeing anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Liz relayed this to us in an email saying, I quote, if we ever get married, I think I won't be having him write his vows with those heartfelt one-liners. <laughs> so in case any of you are wondering, they did not write their vows for tomorrow. <laughs> they went to school together. They started dating. He didn't really date anybody seriously until Liz. So parents take the cues and say, well, this is, seems to be going in the right direction. And that is just really touching to see, like, they're so, you know, everybody's nervous. We're getting married. They're nervous. But they, together, are just so comfortable with each other because they're such close friends. That's what you want. We are so they're opposites in some ways. Liz is more outgoing. Andrew's a little more reserved in his ways, but I think they both bring out the best in each other, and I think that's why they work really well together. The bottom of it, it um, it's just frilly and girly and fun. After trying on about 15 dresses, I feel like I have a good idea of what they feel like, and a lot of them are heavy. Like 20 pounds of dress, and this is light, and I knew it was going to be the end of June. I didn't know it was going to be this hot, but I knew it was going to be a hot day, so... I was pumped about that and I just felt good and it made me smile. These are when I was oh, they're all different. She was like my baby when they brought her home from the hospital. And I took her to her first rate at our movie and I took her to field day with me at school and I took her to soccer games and she was my little sidekick. Liz was born uh, 13 years after her sibling, and it was the best thing that ever happened to us. I was happy, and I was happy because she's a great kid. 
She's strong and hardworking, has good values. And together, I really think it's a case where it could be one plus one equals three. Liz, we are so fortunate to have you joining our family. I mean, Barb and I have said that from the moment we met you at Boston College, that you were a delightful person, and we are so glad that you're joining our family. And we think you will be a great companion to Andrew. We know you are as driven in your own way as he is. Anyone here who has completed a marathon knows that that doesn't just happen. We, we saw the way Liz takes to Andrew. It's good to see what you have privately known all your life be publicly validated. That's, I think, the advantage of having a wedding like this. Even though Liz is younger than I am, I've always looked up to her. She is kind, caring, extremely loving, very loyal, and she's the person who knows what she likes. These likes include the color green, running, Alanis Morissette, <laughs> and Andrew. Andrew is a special guy. It's like, He's not old enough to do this. <laughs> and I know he is because he's the age that we were when we got married. But you know, you know, it's it's a different time in their life and they they're starting on their on their journey through life together and it's it's exciting, you know, I'm happy for them. Uh, the most remarkable thing about having a, a friend that uh, has been around since farts were funny is that whenever you're, you get together, you have this tendency to regress to the same kind of immature, uh, invincible, risk-prone person uh, that you were maybe when you first met. At least I do. do you ever dream about me? Which is why I can tell you, Liz, that you're getting a heck of a guy in Andrew, because I've been trying to get him in trouble every time I saw him for about a decade, and with only a few exceptions, I've failed. Uh, back in high school, I used to cook up all these mischievous schemes, and I really think I was gonna get Andrew all roped in just to be shut down because Andrew had to be home for dinner. Liz and Andrew and I were able to connect on our common love for running. And I think that uh, if they use running as a metaphor for how to live their lives, they will have many happy roads together. And to watch you come down the aisle and to be standing next to him, I don't think he breathed outward until you made it to the bottom of the aisle. So it was really quite a beautiful experience. Liz and Andrew, have you come here freely and without reservation to give yourselves to one another in marriage? We have. <laughs> Will you love and honor each other as husband and wife for the rest of your life? We will. Will you accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? We will. 
Since it is your intention to enter into marriage, I invite you now to join your right hands, to face one another, and to declare your consent before God and His Holy Church. I, Liz, take you, Andrew, to be my husband. I, Liz, take you, Andrew, to be my husband. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. Andrew, repeat after me. I, Andrew, take you, Liz, to be my wife. I, Andrew, take you, Liz, to be my wife. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. You have declared your consent before this church. May the Lord, in his goodness and kindness, strengthen you and fill you both with the abundance of his blessings. What God has joined together, let no man or woman divide. Seeing them dance on the dance floor, I thought that was really nice. And then seeing them on the altar as man and wife, that was a very emotional time. Liz, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. Liz, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Liz, repeat after me. Andrew, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. Andrew, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a humid day, cut him a break. <laughs>I mean, first I was just so happy for him. I mean, I was just like, I couldn't get a smile off of my face. I was just so happy for him, so excited. Uh, I love Liz. On a night like this, I could fall in love. And those moral quandaries that you come across in, in love and life, I, I've just learned to rely on Andrew for a lot of that. And he's proved to have good sense in both. And that's obvious to anybody who has had the good luck to spend some time with the two of you, Andrew and Liz. Um, I'm so happy for my friend Andrew to have found a, a, a wonderful, beautiful, fun, smart woman uh, like Liz to, to spend his life with. I'm just so happy for you both. I noticed when I got your wedding invitation that it was quite unique. And I loved the image that was on the wedding invitation itself, and I was so glad that you carried it over into your booklets for the ceremony today, this idea of a tree. But if you look at the image, the tree has roots that go down into the world, into the earth in separate ways, and join together at the bottom with the symbol of a heart. On a night like this. All the hard work that you put into being compassionate and generous, loving and forgiving with one another will be indeed the fruit that will grow out of your lives. When you get married, you're, you're in a marriage, you're part of a family. You know, you, you take on all of the strengths and weaknesses, the, the fears, goals, dreams of the other person. It's no easy task to take on someone else's dreams, someone else's goals as your own, someone else's fears, their weaknesses as your own. And so I leave you with that, that, you know, what's important to one of you is important to both of you. And I'm just so excited for your life together. I look forward to celebrating with both of you for, for years to come. Hopefully one or two last successes getting Andrew in trouble. I don't know. Uh, and, um, you know, let's, uh, let's raise our glasses. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you.
来不。Bless us all as we run, especially、um, Andrew and Liz, that nothing happens to them along the way. <laughs> Keep us all safe, and we thank you for all of your many gifts. Amen. For many of you, this is your first event of the day, but we had an earlier event this morning, which was a quite muggy, warm 5K run through the beautiful back roads of the main line. What I liked the most about it was Liz. I think you were the first bride who I knew that was willing to sweat in front of their husband to be before they put their wedding dress on. So I thought that was a pretty good sign. Yeah, this is almost、oh, the end. This is them. My prayer for both of you, on a personal level, is that you will always have the strength to want to run with one another, and always have the wisdom to wait for one another. And to let the other catch up, and to encourage one another throughout your lives. Andrew is a true gentleman, a gracious and thoughtful guy, whom the Kelly clan has considered one of their own for years now. He has always impressed me with his sensitivity. The effortless kindness and love they share for one another is what makes their relationship truly special. I love you both very much. Cheers. Andrew and Liz, I'd like to invite you to turn around and face your family and friends. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you for the first time in public the married couple, Elizabeth and Andrew. She's loving and loyal, and always makes me laugh. Kind of like the gift that keeps on giving. And just when I thought she couldn't get any better, along came Andrew. <laughs> I couldn't have wished for a better partner for my sister or a better brother-in-law for myself. So tonight, I'm so grateful to my mom and dad. She's the best present ever. Here's to Liz and Andrew. Your children are special to you, and you want them to be happy. And you know, you always think that you're. Children or your child is special, and then to be to hear other people see the same traits in the child that you see. I am happy they are together. I propose a toast. I forgot my glass, but I propose a toast. Thank you. Here we go to Andrew and Liz. It just kind of brings tears to your eyes, and you know, the fondness people have for each other, Liz and Andrew, or friends have for them. It just is special. Well, it's been a great couple of days.、Uh, our friends have been fantastic. It's been a great couple of months. The Ferranis are great, a great family. Every event has been planned carefully by Andrew and Liz, and it came out beautifully. We did this several years ago for Kate and Panos, and three people disappeared, and we never saw them again. <laughs> If you get tired at the mile two marker, 
Marion Cricket Club is right to the left, and that's where the reception is. So just go in, <laughs> use my name, and have a drink. You know, he, he admitted to me that he had a little crook in his neck when he, when, he, when he woke up this morning, and I was like, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe you internalize, you know, maybe, maybe actually you do have a little bit of stress. Maybe you're not as, uh, you know, invincible as, as we all think you are. And he's like, yeah, maybe that's right. So, but anyways, I was just so excited for him. Feels like this train won't stop and I can't get out. Mm-hmm. It feels like this place is all gone and I don't want to know. Oh, can you help me to stand? My niece, who worships Liz, One of her initial tributes to Liz was to name one of her babies, Baby Andrew. And Andrew definitely deserved to have that doll named after him because he is a great uncle. You know that he is a nurturer. I think he's going to be an amazing dad. Liz, haven't known her quite nearly as many years, but uh, I liked her from the second I met her. She's fun, she's energetic. She brings out a side in Andrew, which I try to bring out myself. Uh, not to say it's fun. Wake me up at 8.30 in the morning, you know, hey man, what are you trying to do today? which was code for take me home right now, please. Uh, He abided by what I'm pretty sure was the only self-imposed curfew among 18 to 21 year olds in in Ann Arbor. Can I say, Mom and I have said that we are so fortunate to have two sons like you and Aaron that we have raised without very few bumps in the road. <laughs> but speaking of which, afterwards we should all have a toast of cognac in honor of the first bottle that Barb and I ever confiscated <laughs> from Andrew back in the day. And I understand that a few more of you took a hit on that night, so. (laughs) This out, and I was like, oh, I want to try that one on. And as soon as I tried it on, I was like, this is a party dress, and I'm going to party in this dress. (laughs) I don't know if you noticed, but she's kind of sassy. She's got a pair of, like, turquoise shoes on. (laughs) There's a rebel underneath of there somewhere. (laughs) Uh, We're here to have fun, but I just want to tell you a few rules so that nobody gets hurt. Uh, First of all, this is for fun, so no tripping or elbowing. (laughs) I'm going to say, ready, set, go. When I say go, that means you can run. But I, I want everyone to know how we're going to do it. Pretty impressive running for two. Oh, my third bag on me. (laughs) (laughs) With two kids in a stroller. (laughs) This, if you see an arrow pointing that way, it means go that way. If you see an arrow pointing that way, it means go that way. Okay. Please bless and prosper all Boston College graduates. Can you help me to stand up? Cause I can't stand up. A mountain goes by and this place won't feel like home. Feel like home. It's humor and intelligence helped us to survive trips where it took almost two hours to pass through the Holland Tunnel. 
Andrew had a positive effect on John's road rage <laughs> by distracting him with philosophical musings on topics such as how the rise of teleportation would affect the world's economic infrastructure. 